three live. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Intuitive Report. We are really excited today because um, Michael and I have Jesse after literally, in my opinion, a historic spiritual mm -hmm. reveal that she made last night. I was like a little kid in a candy shop. I was taking notes. I was, I have so many questions. <laughs> I'm like, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna knock the Navy SEAL out. So I can just ask the questions. You're like, just take him down. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That'll be easy. I got to this. <laughs> Let me ask the questions. Um, I got but, a lot of questions uh, myself. So it's just gonna be fun. Most, so, uh, most everybody in our audience knows Jesse um, Zabodar. Do I say your name correctly? Yes, actually very close. Yes, Saboder. So Saboder, okay. Yeah. And um and she's been, you know, kind of on the show a few times and, and people have gotten to know you through um Aquarius Rising Africa and Right on Radio. Yep. Um you have a book that I didn't know about that I will be purchasing that I'm excited about and I've heard is incredible. And you have a website called Illuminate the Darkness, which is yes. what you are doing. Yes. And I love it. So why don't you, in your words, tell us what you revealed last night. I feel like I'm at the Rolls Royce show. They've got the wraith covered and you're pulling off the drape and the beautiful car is being exposed. <laughs> That's oh, yeah. right. Um, yeah, what it was last night was um, it kind of started with a picture. Um, I had been... Um, I should say lured to the reveal report show. It's a, it's a smaller little show. And they were talking about Ouija boards and he had a specialist on there. And I was like, Oh, you know, this looks like a really great conversation. And he's been trying to reveal a lot of things about the dark arts, you know, and if people listen to my story, I came out of that background and he kind of, you know, shares like, you know, what kind of transpires as you engage in those things. And then, you know, encourages people to come out. So, you know, it's really about illuminating that darkness. So I've, I really have been drawn to that show. And so they started talking, you know, about the different language and different boards. And he started describing some weird ones. And I was like, oh, I know exactly what he's talking about. Mm -hmm. So it kind of just started, I sent a picture and was like, this is what you're talking about, you know? Well, little did I know that, um, there were some other things then that transpired after that. Um, I had had a friend who, you know, had come to me and revealed something that was happening in the spiritual realm. And um, for people who know me, I'm somebody who engages in warfare up in the heavenlies and things like that. And um, so this person had sent me a message and said, Satan's put a restraining order against you. And I was like, really? Okay. Like, what's up with this? Like, I got to check this out, you know? So, you know, I go to petition and check out and see what's going on. And, and all of a sudden the Lord's like, you know, you're going to declassify that, that information, that picture you just sent on the reveal report. And I was like, um, <laughs> like how much, like, what are we letting out here, God, you know, because it goes to, you know, part of my childhood stuff. Um, I had Michael Aquino, I had John Brennan, we're mm -hmm. trainers, and um, I've been trying to bring forward the truth about, you know, our U.S. government using children in experiments. And um, so that's really what that goes back to. It goes to those experiments, you know, with CERN and DARPA and HARP mm. and uh, the stargates, as they call them, you know, the stargates, the spiritual portals and those connections that the U.S. government is making with spiritual beings, unbeknownst to all, you know, the regular public people. So, um you know, what I really handed over was the decipher code to uh, discern, you know, what are those spiritual dominions? Where are they operating? And, you know, how can we engage with that ourselves to gain control over our communities, our areas where these beings have control? Excellent. Yeah. When, and your, your reveal last night, I, I felt like I was pretty savvy on a lot of stuff uh you know angelic and stuff boy 
what I like in for a rude awakening. Uh, you talk about how the angelic realm has generals, colonels, all the way down to the warrior class and the same thing. And I was, I was thinking to myself, she knows the dark side too. I wonder if she has any insight on, on you know, the parallels. And then you go into the parallels about all that. I'm like, oh my God, you just blew my doors away last night. It was amazing. Yeah. It's so Very cool. And then I had, um, this is kind of off topic, but it was about you because you know how I was like concerned for you and I was praying and I sent her a little bullet prayer, you know, yeah. and um, before I did that though, I meditated and I saw a couple of things. And one of them was this really bizarre tube with all of these, like, it looked like oxygen tubes that were going around to it. And I was like, I wonder what that is. That's just so weird. And then the other one was two rectangles. One was going this way and one was going this way. And it looked like a building here and it looked like something else here. And I was like, okay, I don't know what that is. Maybe I'll ask Jesse. Then you were talking about CERN and you said, oh, you should look at the Alice gate because the Alice gate looks just like that code. And yeah. so I'm looking up CERN and see the thing with the tubes and then see that the building is built into the ground like that. Yeah, wow. I think that's actually the, um, like the accelerator part that yeah. it's grounded. So, you know, basically it's a mechanical, the, the gates operate off of resonance, harmonics. So they have these um, mechanical things that replicate the vibrations so they can control that vibrate that vibration of the gate and stuff. So it's it, that's interesting. So you were thinking the Lord was showing you that even before the well, show. I just thought it was like, what is this? And then when I saw it today, my heart dropped. I was like, whoa, there's something really serious going on at CERN that has to do with you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> in particular, I think it was dark, a dark portals. Yes, great portals. Yep. So trying and, to bring in the demonic realm. And uh, yeah. I mean, you talk about Chicago. In Florida and some other places in Europe where there's portals, portals basically for, you know, uh, uh, not ascending into the good realm, but, um, you know, taking people into dark levels of consciousness. Right. And then you talk about um, the demons, basically, the, the generals and so forth, you know, mating with humans, human women, and yeah. creating the Nephilim, and so that they could go through, you know, the gateways to uh, heaven, uh, try and sneak in there and have a have a have a way with uh, God, but only Satan can go and talk to God at the throne. Um, so that's that was all fascinating. All the stuff you yeah. shared. Oh. Well, and imagine what we can do with this information. And that's kind of where I feel like Michael's um, viewers, they're boots on the ground people. They're mm -hmm. not just listeners. You know, they really do want to do yeah. something and and right. be a part of it. And you, you share that too. So if you were to give kind of a short summary of, um, you know, kind of what Michael was saying about the angels and, and how we can begin to take dominion back from these territories mm -hmm. in particular, I mean, do we need to be in these, in these places where those stargates are? Not to take back dominion. No. Um, you know, it, it just happens in prayer, in your communities. Um, I talked about how, you know, the Lord's placed each one of us into a community. And as you have these dark beings that are um, exercising their dominion over those areas, they build strongholds. And, you know, a stronghold is something that is evil. It's something that's not good. So, you know, if we talk about strongholds for children, you know, it could be things like gangs, drugs, alcohol, trafficking, um, you know, the list can go on and on. And it just, you know, as you look at that list, it gets darker and darker and darker. And so, you know, the way to kind of overcome that is two things. One, you know, if, if we know the decipher key and we understand which of those top principalities we're dealing with, Scripture tells us that all we have to do is rebuke and cast out. Mm -hmm. um, you know, literally, you know, these beings are like giants, you know, they're like mountains. I don't know how else, I'm trying to, you know, help people relate because feeling wise, I think, you know, when we think of these dark principalities, the majority of people have a natural reaction of fear. 
And, you know, what I'm trying to encourage people is that we don't need to be afraid. We have the authority. All we have to say is I rebuke you in Jesus name. I cast you out, get out of my community, get out of the schools in my neighborhood, you know, get out of our state. We don't want you here. And if we anoint that land and consecrate it, you know, back to God and we say, you know, no, Lord, we want this land to be healed land. We want it to be a safe community for our children. We want it to be land that brings life and love and kindness, you know, and these are the things we want in our community. And as we gather together and do that, you know, those spiritual qualities are going to start manifesting in those communities. Mm. I love it. So that was one of the things I know you talked about too, were that you can start recognizing the symbols in your community. Mm -hmm. So were you talking about flags? Were you talking about, um, uh, you know, like city logos? What like? Yes, I mean, all of those things, the flags, the city or town logos, uh, you know, the symbols that are on government buildings. Um, sometimes it can be on businesses, a lot of, Banks have been big on having it very interesting symbols lately. Um, <laughs> it's not saying, you know, not every single symbol you see is going to be, right. you know, one of these uh, demonic territory markers. But, you know, when you look at like the older buildings, uh, particularly government buildings, that's where you're going to see those emblems um, arise and stuff and, yeah, like the one you showed us for the Space Force. Yes. Which is so interesting because that's a similar one to the one that they used in Star Trek. And right. so has it been going on for that long? I mean, did they, do you think Star Trek was under some general at that point in time? Yeah, I mean, some of those movie releases, um, you know, even Indiana Jones, um, you know, shows like the Stargates in the fourth one, um, I think it's in the third one where they, um, you know, show um, like kind of like a, a table, like a King Arthur table that's round with weird symbols. So all of these things um, they've been putting out in movies for, you know, for years, at least from the 1940s, um, I would say the late 1940s on. And when we think about time frame you know, that's when near, you know, Area 51, um, they had, you know, uh, Parsons was opened up a spiritual gate. So kind of since that time, you've seen, you know, that we had several things happen. You know, we've had the Nazis, the scientists who came in through Project Paperclip, those individuals, you know, were part of very, um, satanic communities and things um, in the UK, in Germany, and they basically brought the programs over here. Right. And so, you know, we've kind of seen that as they brought that program, you know, they were releasing information through Hollywood, different media sites, um, and doing their, you know, their low key reveal. It's like, we're here, this is what we're doing, but you're going to think it's a fantasy and not real. You know, you're not going to engage in the spiritual realm because now we've made it a movie or a story. So it's not real. And that's what they want people to feel and think is that none of this engagement in the spiritual world is real. Yeah. And a lot of stuff that you were saying is um, uh, the logos and stuff like that. Uh, basically what they're doing is they're, they're presenting it to you. And if you don't say anything uh, about it, if you don't reject it, then they have the green light to basically go, go forward with it. Right. Yeah. So it's, the logo on the, uh, so let's, let's cover that. Oh, yeah, that that'd be great. yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, that's amazing what you did with the logo yesterday. Um, let's see if I pull it back up. There it is. All right. So the logo you were talking about how, um, it was Saturn and uh, the different quadrants. Uh, this was the, the quadrant of Gabriel and over yep. here, the quadrant of Archangel Michael. So yeah, I paid attention. 
but uh, <laughs> it's it's pretty cool if you maybe could break that down, you know, simply for everybody so they could see that this is maybe is not such a positive thing. I don't know. Yeah. So um, kind of what we have in the middle with that arrow um, in the decipher that I gave, you know, it, it you would just continue that arrow and it becomes a diamond. Um, and so the points, there's points in that diamond, nine of them that represent the nine demonic generals. So if I was reading this, you know, it's pointing up at the very top gate. Um, so that's going to be the dominion of Avedon. And he also goes by Apollo or Apollon. And, you know, if, it, if people go back and look, you know, 20, 40 years, we, we have the testimonies of Fiona Barnett, Kathy um, O'Brien. Um, there's a ton of other survivor testimonies um, who, you know, those individuals claim that they were part of these government experiments and that the main entity or demonic spirit who was running those projects, they, they call him Apollon, which that's exactly what this principality's name is. So it kind of confirms um, some of those connections. And then if you look down at the bottom of that arrow, you know, those would be the principalities as Azael and Toth. Um, you know, so they're going to have kind of a lesser dominion than Avedon over that, but the three of them are kind of working in conjunction. And then um, it is important, you know, the, the ring of Saturn, that means that this is a special thing that, you know, Satan himself is involved um, in the heavenly councils with the major decisions that go on um, with this organization or department in the government. Um, the main angelic being then who's going to be, you know, as Satan comes forward to God and says, okay, you know, I want my permission this week to do this and this and this and this, um, you know, Gabriel's going to be the one who's um, fighting and, and saying, you know, kind of countering that, those petitions. So, um, that's how that kind of works. And then the little star clusters, like we kind of read it like a, like three clocks. So you've got at the very center where that arrow is, that's the first clock that's gonna, you know, it has nine numbers on it. Um, and that will tell you who the demonic generals are over that, um, that area. Then you've got the middle area where we see Gabriel and the star clusters. And so again, you know, the, the numbers are important. So when we see those star clusters in there, if we're reading it like a clock, it's numbers four and 10. And, um, you know, I don't usually encourage people to read the keys of Solomon, but you can go to Wikipedia. You can see the list of the numbers that correlate with the demonic uh, spirits names and so that would give you those exact names of those secondary commanders for this. So you can rebuke them directly. Um, and then if you look at that third area where all the words are, um, that's going to be the third clock, but that's a little bit different space. What you're um, looking for in that is any distinguishing markers, because if you see any distinguishing markers, that means that it's telling you like locations um, and, and the locations are, are going to, you know, if you apply it like globally, it's going to tell you where the global headquarters are. Um, it's going to tell you where the continent wise, where the headquarters are. And then if you would put it on a U.S. map, it would tell you where the headquarters are for for. Um, for space force. So, you know, and here it's telling us that, you know, it's going to, the head, two main headquarters are going to be located off, you know, the coast in California, Northern California at the dumb bases there and at the dumb bases that are in Northern Florida. So those are going to be the two main operational um, units for this. Um, so, you know, when you're reading this, it really gives you ideas um, on, you know, areas you can 
focus your prayer towards. You know, if you know that in, you know, Gene Decode, he has an extensive list of all the dumb bases. So with this information, you can compare it with what Gene Decodes have, has done and say, okay, you know, where are the, you know, dumb bases that are in Northern Florida? And, you know, just start praying for those areas. Uh, the same with, you know, Northern California. And, um, you know, and take that dominion back, say, okay, you know, we're going to rebuke these principalities. Um, you know, I brought up the story when I was a kid, um, you know, we would get forced into physical and spiritual battles uh, with individuals who were defectors, or sometimes it was just part of our training. And, um, you know, it wasn't just a physical fight with whoever was in the room with you. You know, the, these are high level witches and warlocks. They'd be bringing, you know, calling, summoning, invoking their spirits. So oftentimes you'd have, you know, multiple beings that you're fighting at one time, both in the spiritual and the physical world. And so the one day, you know, we were playing chess and I just kept sitting there, you know, and I was thinking about the different realms. And I was like, well, you know, if, if the general demons are the main power that these witches and warlocks are drawing on and without those demons, you, you know, they don't really, they don't have any power. <laughs> so why are we wasting all our energy and time <laughs> doing the physical fight? Like, let's just go for the big bad boy, take him out rebuke him and then we'll take care of the person, you know? And so when we did that, it was a real game changer. Um, so, you know, that's how two children survived in that system, you know, at, at those levels. So um, anybody can do it. You know, that's, that's a really encouraging thought for people. You know, if you're questioning like, can I do this? Can I take dominion over my community from these principalities? You know, remember that, that two little children took out these generals, you know, between ages four to six. So mm. that's the reality of it. Wow. Unbelievable that they put you in those rooms like that. Wow. Fight to the death. Yeah. It, it was, yeah, it was, it was pretty scary. You know, the first time I, I still remember, um, you know, we were walking down the one training center was in underneath the Catholic church in the basement and they had all these extra rooms and like, it's like this long tunnel area with these rooms. And, and so they opened this big kind of metal door and, you know, our teacher just kind of like peeked in and then she was like, Oh, look and see what's in there. You know? And of course we're both curious and we're like, peeking in next thing we both get shoved in there the door gets slammed shut behind us and we hear the key lock and we're like what the heck and it's pitch dark you can't see anything and we just hear her say you know only either you live or he lives and we're like who's the he right <laughs> we're like who's the he like we don't know who that is and uh and, you know, my training partner was just like, hold the bottom of my shirt and I'll hold yours and don't let go. And, you know, th that way we'd be able to keep track of each other in the dark. And, you know, next thing I know, I hear this chain like go flying through the air. And it literally like I stepped to the side, knocked over my training partner <laughs> And it, it like went right past my shoulder. And I was like, what in the world was that? But then I was like, you know, I had heard the sound. So I knew where the guy was and just the spirit of God just came over me. And I just like beelined it straight for that guy. I let go of my training partner's shirt and was just like going straight for that guy. And, you know, like I was a prayer warrior even back then, you know, so I just put my hands on that guy's chest and started praying. And that was the only thing I knew to do, you know, and so it was interesting because, you know, all those things just really taught me a lot about spiritual warfare. Mm, it's unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, you know, as a, uh, I was in my forties when I went, when I started the spiritual warfare, 
um, in the basically in Iraq, where I went up against a, a demon uh, that was on uh, one of the terrorist leaders. And first, I was I was pretty scared because it was like, wow, this demon came out, and I was like, Oop, you're back, like, back whoa, you know? <laughs> what's and I was that? Like, uh, whoa, that's a little bit over my head. And then <laughs> next thing I know, Archangel Michael was like, so you think you can go back? I'm like, go back, I'm dead. And he's like, yeah, you can go back. I'll send you back. It's like back in time in my body. And then I had these abilities. I sent out love and I just started feeding all these demonic uh, realms. So um, it's, it's pretty amazing. You know, you're, we're yeah. trying to teach people that the love, the energy, the connection with right. God is unbelievably powerful. Yeah. Very beautiful. Absolutely. Yes. And that you can, you know, like in those situations, um, you know, often once we get past that fear response, you know, it's like we can reach out, we can touch these individuals, even if they're coming at us with anger, hate, every intent to kill. It's like we can just walk straight up to them and be like, you know what? No, I'm going to show you love, the love of God. And there's so much power there that it just overcomes, you know, that you know, I've had people put down their guns, fall on their knees, mm -hmm. you know, they, they just become weak in that presence of God. And that's, you know, that's what we bring is that light into that darkness. Mm -hmm. I love it. One of the things that I thought stood out that you taught last night, and if anybody gets a chance, go to Reveal Report and watch it. It's a two hour workshop. It's not even a show. It's a, it's a workshop. Yeah. It's actually teaching us how to take this this weapon of prayer and anointing and reclaiming territory and it's phenomenal but one of the things that that really stood out to me was when you were talking about pence calling the space force mm -hmm. not soldiers but guardians which is the yeah. exact name of the nine what are they called the the generals the nine generals, um, they're called the guardians. Is that right? Mm -hmm. they, they do go by the guardians Why or the watchers, but then you also have, um, you know, part of the higher levels of the system are called the initiates of the flame. And so people can read that book. It's called initiates of the flame and it's a high level Masonic book. You'll see in the corners of the pages, uh, swastikas because at that high level of masonry, they're also Nazis. Um, and so, you know, with that order, that's a, that's a very specific term that they call themselves guardians. And it's become the term that is known for, you know, the, the Global Alliance Federation Army. Um, so it, it was interesting that he literally publicly declared that, you know, people have to ask, why are they not called military soldiers, you know, like the rest of the yeah. army Marines, you know, you're like, or, or specialized, you know, I mean, you've got your seals and other stuff like that. You get specialized names, but these are all names that we've had for, for years. And all of a sudden they're like, no, these are guardians. And you're like, okay, we need to, let people know what this is about. Yeah, and naive me uh, was like, oh, it's about time they called troops guardians. <laughs> yeah, right. You know? I didn't realize that they were talking about the heavenlies, you know? Right. <laughs> so that's just phenomenal. And yeah, and we should clarify that, that not, you know, not you've got both good and you've got dark, you know, people who are in the dark, also people who are very good in the light who make up this global alliance you know army so we're not saying that everybody in that army is evil or bad but it's just we're coming into that time where you know they're really starting to declare themselves that there is something global or galactic that's going on it, it's beyond you know just the u.s or you know the globe you know this is something that goes into those heavenly realms so mm-hmm and it was uh, it was interesting. You talked about uh, Obama and um, you know Oprah. Um, Oprah. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Um, you know, taking over the reins. You know, to uh, on, on one of those gates and stuff. That was uh, that was pretty. Whoa, you know, we you, know, you always kind of know that you know 
that those two were a little bit off, but you know, your insights are very helpful. Like Pence, we know, we've all known that Pence is not a good guy and, uh, right. and you, you affirm that. And so that's, that's, I think that's very valuable, you know, going forward to know how, how, how much, how bad some of these people really are. So yeah, talk a little bit about them. You know, um, a lot of people think Obama is a clone or an, an actor, a double or whatever. Um, from your perspective, you're thinking maybe that he's, that's the real guy because he's actually the head of the Order of the Phoenix who has taken it over from Soros, right? And like, you don't think he's... Well, you know, we're, re we're reading information like what we're seeing. So, you know, in that world, as people um, come into their, well, they start off, you know, they, they're trained for position, they go through the MK or the Monarch program. And um, as they go through that programming, they're trained specifically for positions. You have some positions like satanic council seats where, you know, anybody who's a high priest for that quadrant, um, they can step up and say, I want that satanic council seat. So if you have more than one person who steps up, then they're required to do, you know, what they call a witch's battle. They got to duke it out. And whoever wins gets that seat. And they also get that other person's powers and all the demonic allegiance, you know, that they've collected. So, um, you know, right around that time we had, you know, you had Soros stuff was going on. So it was like Soros's seat was open. So we knew they were going to be choosing somebody to take that Phoenix position uh, for him. And, you know, I know that, you know, he's got several, everybody in the council has to declare a humanitarian effort. Um, all, it goes all the way down to high priest, high priestesses. So they will pick something globally or, you know, in another country, um, like you saw, like, you know, Bill and Hillary Clinton, there was a lot they were doing with Haiti, with the Clinton Foundation. Right. So that whole foundation it is what they do their humanitarian efforts through. So there's quotas, you know, <laughs> they have to do so many things that look like they're good deeds, but, you know, really they're not, they're advancing the system. So for George Soros, one of his was that, you know, he had this massive fund for education for, you know, he used a lot for high school students, college students. And so, you know, if stuff's going on with him, you have to ask, well, where's that money? You know, who, who's going to take over that humanitarian effort? And he did work hand in hand with Oprah because, you know, she's one of the high priestesses for the West Quadrant. And, you know, she did a lot with the schools in Haiti and South Africa. Um, so think about, you know, behind the scenes, where did that funding for all those schoolgirl projects that she was funding come from? it basically is Soros's money. You know, they're taking money from their higher ups and distributing it and doing their job in the system. Um, so we know, you know, it, it, you, you have individuals who work together, you know, in the quadrant that it's kind of like a, a regular company. You're gonna have the CEO of the company and then you're gonna have the managers who work underneath them, uh, the coordinators, things like that. So, um, you know, so we were seeing all this stuff kind of going on and, you know, Soros' seat was open and then Baron Hilton had died. So his seat was open as well. And then we also had another um, um, councilman Taxel um, who was over the West, he died as well. So th there were three satanic council seats that were open at that time and there were eight eligible high priest. So, you know, you had individuals, um, I've kind of brought forward that in my experience, um, the high priests who were eligible were, um, you had Mark Zuckerberg, you had uh, Clooney, um, who were some of the others, you had Clinton, Obama, um, 
you know, those, those became the main four contenders, you know, and someday I'm going to create an Illuminati soap opera because I was sitting there like, God, this is not fair that I'm not in the system anymore because I would pay anything to watch Zuckerberg kick Clinton's ass. You know? But I was like, man, I don't get to see this, right? So, um, you know, I was just watching because it's like, okay, there's three seats open. Who's going to go for what? You know, you've got this power structure fight and the women can fight for these seats too. So you're like, huh. And, uh, you know, next thing you hear, you know, you hear um, Clooney is declaring he's starting something new in Colombia with the coffee. He's really investing in it. And you're like, okay, Clooney took. And you can tell by the region. So because it was Colombia, it was very clear he took Baron Hilton's position. So, um, and that's one of the quadrants, right? Right, right. So, um, so then you're like, okay, well, who's gonna, you know, step up as the phoenix? And then, you know, and the next thing I'm hearing is Obama's, you know, gonna be giving this graduation speech, and Oprah's coming on with him, and and you're like, up, oh, there's the education money and the funding. So, you know, that's what I'm seeing happen. And, and you see this exchange of power, but then you're like, is it really him? It, is it just a show? Um, you know, there are other people who know about this hierarchy structure. So, you know, it, it very well may be a show, but um, yeah, it just gets very interesting when you look at the big picture of things and, you know, not knowing if, if all these people are arrested yet, there's, not been confirmation right. you know that at that time this was back in may um you know so it, it was plausible it's plausible either way but from what i see you know i'm seeing all these declarations and seeing them set up stuff but now you're not really seeing a lot happening so it's like hmm yeah so it it could be actors who who know how the system works you know, playing these people and playing these roles uh, to maybe get other people who are in the council to talk or to come forward. Um, I don't know yet. So, okay. Well. So we know, we know that, um, you know, uh, the Africa thing was uh, basically a front so that they could traffic uh, girls. Right. And that's what Oprah's involved with. We've talked about all this, but just kind of share a little bit with, uh, you know, because we probably have some audience that haven't seen some of this. Now Clooney um, and a mall. What? What? Well, you know that Clooney is dark, so he's going to marry someone that's dark as well. So what? What do you think her position is? Well, she has a lot of connections with Abravamic, who, you know, is um, who also is a high priestess. She's trained other um, high priestesses that. Um, let me maybe put it this way. She worked in conjunction originally um, under the grand high priestess, Gloria Vanderbilt. And so together, you know, they were training other high priest priestesses for the Eastern quadrant. Like, you know, Madonna um, is one of the grand dames. You've got Lady Gaga, who's also a grand dame, you know, grand dames are, um, they're kind of like the ones that run the occultic brothels the beta kitty slaves. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so then you have, you know, Clooney's wife and, you know, she specifically has very high connections with these other women in the Eastern quadrant that are high priestess level. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, you've got Clooney, who's a high priest and, you know, I think it's pretty plausible if she's hanging with a lot of other high priestesses that we could probably say she's of that level, but. I mean, they probably don't just hang out with just anybody. <laughs> no, I mean, I mean, how do you get like an audience to just hang out with like, you know, Madonna and Marina Abravamic, <laughs> you know, that that's pretty high level and very specialized type of witchcraft and divination that mm -hmm. each of those individuals participate in, you know, so they're, they're moving mass amounts of the system. You know, Marina's made her way all the way into Hollywood, 
you know, where now they're even doing the spirit cooking and the, you know, at the one event they were doing shots of adrenochrome and um, she's had the, you know, at first it seemed like a faux feast, um, you know, where it looked like they were cannibalizing and they had cakes that looked like real women that they cut into with body parts. And you're like, so creepy. This is weird, you know? And, and so it's a very dark, you know, type of divination, which that's what Gloria was into. Her, her divination was very dark. And so each one of them have, like you've talked about, uh, maybe a demonic general that they align with. Yeah. So each one of the, each one of the different quadrants, you know, has people that are basically aligned with that and work with that demonic general. Now, one thing that you brought up was, was fascinating to me is there's a dark side and a light side to yeah. this, this darkness. Can you explain that a little bit? Yeah. So with the dark side, you know, um, all of them are going to still be under those nine demonic generals, whether they're dark or light. But if you're on the dark side of the system, you're really going to get into and specialize in the black magic or the forbidden magics. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, that's going to include things like the sex magic. Um, And then if you're on the light side of the system, you're going to be practicing the white or you might get into some of the gray magic, but you're not going to, most of the people with the white magic focus, you know, they want to, their focus is not self, you know, it is doing what's best for humanity, more of a global focus. They'll, they'll do healing magic. Um, So most of their magic will be to benefit other people, but because they are still, you know, you've got, as you get into like the other and um, demonic beings, those beings also classify themselves as light or dark. So you may have a demon that um, masquerades as an angel of light, just like scripture tells us, you know, Lucifer or Satan does that. And so they will, you know, teach people these white magic things that, you know, give them spells that could heal or love potion mixes um different things that they could use to benefit people with but at at the core of it because they're still demonic spirits they're lusty there's always going to be a price so you know even if you you know what i've seen people who you know they have a loved one who's sick and they make a pact with this um you know we'll just say light side system spirit, um, you know, to heal that loved one. And then 10 years down the road, you know, all of a sudden that spirit appears and is demanding that the price for that healing be paid. Wow. And, and so the choice is if you, you know, you do what they're asking or, that person who was healed dies or, you know, somebody dies in their place. Usually there's always, you know, death involved in the price. Um, So, you know, it can, they have this appearance of light, but in the end, you know, there'll always be that demand and it may not be right up front. Um, So I don't know if that answered all of your questions with that, but. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And then I have, um, if I could screen share, if it works, let's see. Um, Can you guys see that? Not yet. Okay, hold on. Desktop. Can you guys see this? Yeah. Yay. (laughs) This is something that was so disturbing to me that was Elon Musk's wife, Grimes, on Twitter, is posting this. Yeah. If you go look at it, and I was curious about like, you could probably decipher so many things in here. (laughs) And if, if you want to, or, or not, if you don't, I don't, I don't know that, you know, Elon is somebody that you've talked about, but, um, I just found a lot of this really suspicious and bizarre. Mm -hmm. Well, if we were, if we were using this, (laughs) you know, like the decode thing, 
you see in that background like three major it looks like dark spirits because they're darker in color and you know my guess is it would probably represent avidon ball and molek because if we're looking at that you know those nine points on that diamond um you know, those are the ones that are at the top of that nine points. Now, what's interesting, though, is that kind of the steps, the structure, the columns that are there um, with every temple of Baal or Ashtaroth, you will see the, you know, or Masonic temples have them, but you'll see this area where they've got the, the columns. And usually there's two there. And those columns represent Baal and Ashtaroth. So it's interesting that, you know, it looks like she's got some obelisk things kind of in the back with, you know, the like the red ribbons. And there's an angel there that looks like he's had a sword and had his way and, and knocked down, you know, these pillars. And, you know, if I was reading this, I mean, it almost looks like this little angel has has knocked down the poles of Baal and Ashtaroth, but, um, you know, it is a very interesting, you know, you've got in the back there, they look more like adult figures. And then you've got the little angels and um, yeah. So it, it's kind of, it's a very interesting picture to interpret. Um, You know, numbers are important in that world I was counting six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. You've got 13 little angels. If you count that wing on the far or the two wings on the far right, kind of by themselves, which, um, you know, there's, there's 13 sisters of light. So, you know, it's like, are these representing the sisters of light? Maybe, I don't know. Um, but okay. very interesting indeed. Yeah. I just, <laughs> when I saw it, I was like, wow. <laughs> Super creepy. Very and you, you, uh, you kind of interpreted uh, the Tesla um, oh, you know, yeah. um, emblem a little bit yesterday too. You want to just kind of do a little bit of that too? Yeah. I purposely brought forward because I wanted people to see kind of across the board how you can have these military or government um you know, departments, and then you've got, so, you know, like we have Space Force, which the symbols are very similar to symbols that, you know, Michael Aquino used on his book, which is an actual manual that our military uses. And then also comparing that to businesses like Tesla, because you have these symbols that are so similar to each other. And people need to realize that they do say something. It, it tells us kind of a hierarchy structure. Um, so I brought out, you know, the T shape or it kind of, the way that they do it, you know, it's supposed to kind of represent a T, but that particular symbol is used throughout many magic books, um, different sources. And um, it, it represents the spirit Astra because it looks like a female uterus. Um, so, you know, as you go, you know, as you're doing this decode there, yeah, you can see there how it looks like a uterus with fallopian tubes. And, you know, when we talked about the symbol that I, the decipher code, you know, kind of this top part of, um, the Tesla symbol, it's got a triangle at the very top that's kind of cut out. We'll just call it that T or whatever. Um, so you see that that V that dips down. And in the Masonic world, that V shape is known as the chalice, which represents the female. So when you have that V shape plus then, you know, what looks like the uterus, that will always represent the female in Ashtaroth. Um, you know, if you're looking at the Kabbalah ladder, um, Ash, the gate Ashtaroth is at is, is kind of right in the middle. And, um, you know, it also, if they put planets in those areas, you've got the planet Venus there. So it definitely represents the female and the feminine 
And uh, it's important that that chalice is not, you know, there's nothing else to distinguish it. It's left open, you know, and blank. Um, they're wanting to distinguish that. And so what I brought forward was that, um, you know, we know that there's other things, you know, Musk is somebody who has multiple companies. He's got multiple um, organizations that he runs. He's got connections with SpaceX and other things like that. So the question is, is that, you know, as he's working with NASA, as he's working with other individuals that work with our government, how far do, does that work go? You know, through these symbols, can we distinguish who he was connected to? You know, is he doing things with the projects or the experiments? So, you know, we compared that Tesla symbol to uh, Michael Aquino's book, mm -hmm. um, the second manual, which is Star, uh, Mind Star. And there again, we see that same. T, you know, but with his, it's got the Masonic compass or the, you know, the, um, the male symbol that comes down and it's directly over that T and it's, you've got that, you know, again, that open space. And so that's going to show dominion that, um, that Avedon has control over Ashtaroth in that, that he's the main demon running things. And she's kind of the secondary principality that's running those things. And so, you know, the male is always, uh, this is just the system rules. I don't know where these come from, but um, you know, the two forces when put together, they believe form the perfect equilibrium. Okay. So, but the male will always be the one in control. So it tells us that, you know, that a keynote somehow um, there's a connection between, you know, a keynote's manuals, which, um, you know, definitely deal with uh, government mind. They don't call it mind control. They call it mind construct programs and psyops um, in spiritual warfare. Um, and that connection is somehow, um, aligning with some of the different organizations that Musk has created. So, you know, I bring it forward because we have to, we have to ask, you know, yeah. is there a connection between Musk and some of these individuals that we know are part of the system in our government? Right. Um, you know, I believe I've shown people the answer to that question. Yeah. Um, and so, um, the, the, the top, the, the Masonic male that mm -hmm. looks just like Aquino's eyebrows. Does he do that on purpose? He, he, he really, I will say my experience is he was very heavy into the sex magic. Mm -hmm. And I believe he did do it on purpose. Oh my gosh. If you have a picture um, of that, Michael, <laughs> it's it. just wild. I think that it is know, wild. in order to kill him, you have to cut off his eyebrows. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I'll make him like turn. <laughs> <laughs> you would have had like this, like, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I just, but, when I saw that, it reminded me of his eyebrows. And that's all I can think about ever since I've seen him. There yeah. it is. Like that's one of the things I've been trying to bring forward is that, you know, this is an individual that, you know, as I was a child, um, you know, he was, he was in, I guess I got to say it this way. My experience would, you know, included him in many of the original um, rituals that I experienced. So, you know, this man's hands were on top of my head and my training partner's heads as we were given our ritual names. He, he was one of the seven individuals who were part of that first initiation ritual. Um, you know, and then his leadership went from there to where he was training us in the different projects like Looking Glass, Star Wars Now, 
uh, the voice of God projects. And as you get into those higher projects, you know, literally you're operational in the spirit world. Um, you know, who did he learn this from? Well, he learned it from a man who was his trainer plus mine. That was, you know, the Nazi Legion of Defense leader, Michael Carcock. Um, people have, you know, let me maybe put it this way. His family fought really hard to try to disprove that he had any Nazi connections at all. And yet, you know, as I was a child and I was trying to come forward and tell people, you know, about what was happening to me and other children, um, you know, we had the, the Catholic church, the training center, the military base there in, in Chicago, Illinois, they, you know, caused a house fire to make it look like he died. And then what did they do? They moved him, they hit him, they erased any document. I mean, it was crazy. Like everybody in the neighborhood, the house burns down the neck, you know, we were out there at like, you know, one, two in the morning, get up at 7 a.m. And it's like the neighbors have fresh rolled grass. <laughs> Didn't even look like a house had ever been there. And you're like, you know, that, then they play the crazy game. You know, what are you talking about? There's never been a house. There's never been people who live there. And that becomes the narrative your whole life that you imagined all these experiences wow. with this person. And, you know, so for me, it's like, I, you know, for four years of my life, I had this man, you know, training us in defense magic. And, um, you know, literally he was not, you know, it's not like somebody who, you know, is practicing sword fighting with a child with a, you know, a wood sword. I mean, this man would beat the hell out of us. And, you know, I mean, he'd throw us across the room fighting with us. And it would be like, get up, get up, get up, you know, keep getting up. And, you know, did he teach us? Well, yeah, because then they stuck us in those rooms with adults, you know, who we had to fight. So, you know, he was very good at his job. You know, we learned how to defend ourselves. Um, you know, but it's like, you've got these memories and you're like, um, <laughs> you know, I, I know this man was not made up. Well, imagine my surprise, you know, 34 years later, I find out he's still alive. A and it's just like, what are you kidding me? Like, you know, they faked the whole house fire. What did they do? They moved him because he was a Nazi. They didn't want people to find out. So they moved him to a different area and they separated me and my training partner. So, um, you know, he had connections directly with um, some of the bigger connections I've brought out on Good Dog Show was that he worked in conjunction with Nicholas Winton, um, who was one of the individuals who uh, originally came from Hampstead in the UK, which we know that town, there's been a lot of children who've come forward about the satanic occultic things in that town. And um, Winton came from that town and he was one of the major individuals who a few years back was honored for saving children in kinder transport. But he worked in conjunction with, with Carcock, um, you know, who, who both of them in their conjunction um, oversaw the initial training of Michael Aquino and um, John Brennan. And, and how do I know that? Because, you know, they were part of the high priests and, you know, they would be considered my teachers in the experiments uh, that I was involved in the different projects like Looking Glass and um, Star Wars Now and stuff and operating the spiritual gates. So, you know, where did the knowledge of, of the ancient languages, you know, like that decipher key that I gave, where did that knowledge come from? That came from the, the forbidden books that are passed down through the highest members of this elite satanic Luciferian organization. They don't want it in the hands of the public. They don't want it in the hands of the Christians. They keep it for themselves. But then as they take on disciples and they teach other you know, people who are going to be taking their positions, 
you know, who became the defense leader trainers, who became the people running the different experiments and programs that dealt with these spiritual gates. You had Aquino, you know, ran all those projects for the West, both in the United States and internationally. And you had Brennan who ran all those programs in the East. And, you know, they saw different departments, different things. You know, Brennan got into the DNA, the training of the CIA, FBI. You know, he, he was more of, you know, into training the operatives and then Aquino would take some of those operatives, you know, who were highly specialized and he would teach them to do complete warfare in the spirit, you know, so that you don't even have to use a physical soldier. You know, you can just send in somebody through different forms of remote viewing. Yeah. Everything you want to know, you can find out and do access through the spirit world. So those were the programs that in conjunction they were operating um you know did they despise each other absolutely because it's a fight for power you know both of them were top dogs you know sharing a position that one man you know had tr had given each of them a portion of his position right so and then um i have a, a question before michael pulls this up and that is when because I know you know how powerful spiritual warfare is. Obviously, you <laughs> you just said that you don't need a soldier if you have this ability, right? Right. And so if you can um, weaponize the people for good, um, which mm -hmm. is kind of what you did yesterday, you you allowed for us to understand how this works and that it can be won by taking over a different kind of territory than what we have thought. What was it that was keeping you until then from wanting to share it? Was it because of um, exposing something that you were afraid there'd be repercussions for? Or were you not sure if the world was ready for it yet? Like, what was your, if you don't mind sharing? Um, yeah, like I said, I mean, this is, you know, this is top level. So, you know, um, very few individuals are going to really know and understand um, this information. Right. Um, it is something that, you know, they will kill um, if they don't want it out. So, um, you know, until, I guess, until, you know, the Lord, the, and it, maybe I'll put it this way. <laughs> this is information that I had buried with Jesus. Yeah. You know, it was stuff that was off you know, off limits. It was unshareable. I have information that it's like, I just can't bring it up or share it. But if the Lord says to me, you know, like um, with Carcock, that was one of those situations. The Lord said, you know, you're going to share about Carcock. And when I, when that happened, it meant then where did the Lord go next? Then I had to share about my experiences with Aquino and with Brennan and with the adrenochrome abuse, um, the experiments, all of that. But God, you know, was revealing that information, paving that way for other people to come forward with it. So, you know, it, it, it simply it was just buried information. And the Lord said, you now are going to bring this forth. And, you know, this is what I want my people doing. And, you know, we're at this pivotal point in, in time where, you know, we're at the height of the battle between dark and light. And, you know, beyond what people can see, we have these principalities, we have the archangels like Michael and Gabriel, and, you know, they are in this war and they're fighting for that domain. And so what the Lord has done is he's saying, I want my people who want love and goodness and truth and, you know, freedom and safety for the children. Um, you know, the Lord wants to bring the captives, those who are held in bondage and oppression because of the evilness and wickedness that's being done by these evil principalities and the systems that they're running. Um, the Lord 
has plans to, you know, he's always said from the beginning that he will bring an end to those things. So this is part of his bringing it to an end that, you know, he says all things will be laid bare, all things will be brought to light. Um, the timing is completely his. So um, that's the sole reason that I brought that forward is because the Lord was saying, this is the time. Now my people are going to rise and, you know, all the things that are in the darkness is going to come to light and they're going to lose their domain that they've had over the earth because mm -hmm. that's our inheritance. You yeah. know, each person, each child, um, this earth is our inheritance. Yeah, here's a, here's a little portion of the reveal report where you kind of started out, you know, talking about the gates and stuff like that. So I just wanted to bring this up so that everybody gets a, a view of this. This is getting a lot of views. It's still uh, still still cranking up. It's uh, yeah. well over 10,000, 14,000 or something like that. So so if you haven't seen this, guys, go check this out because it basically builds a foundation for what we're talking about. We're just going into kind of a little detail about some of the things that she talked about. Just amazing, amazing stuff. So you talk about Project Looking Glass. Now, I, I feel that I'm involved with that in uh, the Secret Space program. Um, there's other people that have talked about it, said that the, the dark side has their version and that the light has their version and that the light seems to be a little bit more uh, informative. Uh, they, they seem to know a little bit more of what's going on ahead of the dark. Can you talk about any of your experiences with, because uh, it sounds like you might have some training in that. It's pretty impressive. Yeah, um, uh, with it, um, I was in a core group of three children. So it was me, my training partner, and then we had one other little boy who was in there with us. And, um, you know, our, we would be in different places. So it wasn't always at the same military base or, you know, we primarily dealt with the spiritual gates. So it started where, you know, they would introduce us to the spiritual gates. They um, would test our skills and abilities for seeing, hearing, and feeling in the spirit realm. Mm -hmm. So some of the basic testing I went through, you know, they would ask me, you know, if I could hear the spirits talking and I had to recite, uh, they call it biofeedback, um, you know, recite back word for word what I heard the spirit saying. Mm. And, you know, it didn't take long, maybe like a week or two. And I got really tired of that game. And it was much funner, you know, because I could hear all the generals. And, you know, so it's kind of funny when you're a kid, because you've got these big, you know, <laughs> demonic beings <laughs> and they think that you can't hear or see them, you know, but, but I could. And wow. so they're having these private conversations and the other humans, you know, can't hear what these beings are saying. And so I just started repeating back everything that I heard all the generals saying, you know, and um, finally I got where they're like, you know, no, no, stop. You know, you don't need to recite back. So there's a lot of biofeedback with these projects um, so, you know, they'll put you in situations, um, you know, like where we'd be at one of the spiritual gates, you know, whether it was Chicago or the one in Wisconsin, usually, and, you know, you, you view differently, like I'll, I'll explain that, um, there's two different types of remote viewers. You've got those who astro project. So for that type, you know, they're physical body remains one place, but then their spiritual body can leave and can experience the spiritual world. And, you know, they have all these experiences. They can actually do things, affect the physical world through the things they do in the spiritual world. But then they come back in their body and, you know, they would tell about their experiences. Um, me and my training partner and the other boy with us, we were not the remote viewer type. Um, we were the type, it's almost like we're, you know, your spirit never leaves your body, but you see everything in vision. So, you know, we just had to be in the presence of those gates and we would start seeing things, events that would happen in time mm -hmm. and, and the future usually. So, you know, we, we saw a lot of end time events. So as you know, we'd come back and they, they would be asking us what we saw, you know, they would be writing down these series of events. 
but we each saw things differently um, and they purposely will choose children that see differently because it, they use it as a check system. So, you know, for me, I would always see the vision and see the very end result. Mm -hmm. So like kind of the end scene, Uh, my training partner, he would just see, like, he'd never see the end result, but he would see like the things that would lead up to that end event, but he'd also see like all the consequences or, or the results. So it's like, if this happens, this is going to be what transpires out of that. Or if this happens, that's what transpires. Okay. And then the other little boy, you know, he just saw all the things that would lead up to. So how they use that information then is they compare the notes and they're like, okay, this first little boy, these events are going to happen and we're going to watch for those things. So when those things happen, we know this end result is going to be coming. Um, And then they take the notes for the second child and they're like, okay, if that event happens, well, here's the outcome. We don't want that outcome. So how can we change that event to get a different outcome. So they start trying to play with time to see if they can change the end result. Mm -hmm. So that's the basics of looking glass. Um, You know, at its core, you've got a lot of, you know, how the enemy's using it is you've got clairvoyance, you've got divination, the divining of the future, Um, you know, so they're looking for children that have high level prophetic gifts Um, you know, who can connect with the spirit world in that way. As you get into the Star Wars Now project, that's the next level. And so, you know, only their top looking glass students are going to go into that project. And so with that, you know, now it's not just you're in the presence of the gate. um, You're learning to interact with that gate because, you know, we're able to enter into those gates and enter the spirit world through those. Wow. Um, You know, ultimately, depending on the gate, you know, you've got different gates, the the major ones that the principalities are over, they go vertical up and down. So they go to heaven or they go to the lower realms. Some of them lead straight to the throne room of God. Those are the most important gates to the system because ultimately they want those gates open And they want to usurp the throne of God. Um, Other spiritual gates go horizontal. So those are more, they use them for travel. You know, they've mapped out, you know, which gates are connected to which. So even as we looked at that Space Force um, emblem, um, that third ring where, you know, we were using it to map out the the dumb bases that would be involved with those headquarters, The other piece of information it tells us is about that spiritual gate, or I'll say gates, um, that that um, department uses. So there's a a horizontal access for travel between the gate that is at the dumb base in northern Florida and the gate that's at the dumb base in northern California. So you could, you know, be at one and travel to the other. Um, so that's what it would tell you. Um, you also could travel among those nine gates. You could travel to the 10th gate, which leads to heaven. And you could travel to, you know, the, the second and the, uh, first gates. Um, so all of those, those gates are going to enter. It tells you which gates interconnect and you just learn which ones go in what direction for, the traveling. Mm-hmm. Um, they're only going to use that for the highest, you know, the highest levels. They're not going to let other people know of, of that access. The, the spirits, um, y- you know, you got to ask, how does a spirit travel through the spirit world? Well, they use the spiritual gates and they use th- those access points are the ley lines that we see on maps. Like if you're looking at the ley line maps, it's basically the horizontal axis is between one point, one spiritual gate to the next. So, you know, there's lots of spiritual gates and this kind of just gives us a code, you know, that helps us decipher which ones are they using the most for travel and, 
you know, how are those principalities getting from one place to the next to operate those organizations? Um, so, you know, you're learning with that then, you know, I talked in the beginning how you've got the language with that chart as well. And, and that language then tells you the, so the next level I didn't even get to, you know, on the refill report, but I, I had mentioned that it was a song, you know, that it gives you the song for the gates. Okay. So, oh. um, so as you're looking at all of that information, you start, because I said, you know, it could be seen as in 3d as a sphere. Um, so you start with that inner clock and you look at the numbers, you know, we know we've got number 12, because that's Avedon, and you've got number for the gates, you, but now you're looking at the clock, you know, so no longer is it angelic being number one that you're looking at, what you're looking at is the clock number. So that's gonna be number five, and then number seven, okay? So remember each number also represents a letter, which is made out of a sound. So that's how you get the resonance you know, you've got that, those sounds now, that's the first layer for the inner, then you read that middle ring, and it tells you the sound, the sounds that come next. And then you've got that outer ring, which is going to tell you the third level of sounds. Now you've got a cord that is connected to the spiritual gate. Um, you know, all of creation is living and has a song that it sings. Wow. So now you know the song as you're deciphering that emblem that will open those spiritual gates so that you can enter through. Uh, scripture tells us, you know, enter his gates with thanksgiving in your heart. Well, what's the particular thanksgiving song? Um, it will even tell you, you know, depending on, remember I talked about there were the spaces and those are considered the light and then you have the distinguishing dark line that formed like, like tree rings for the clocks. Okay. Um, so if it falls in those dark spaces, you're going to have a minor chord versus a bright or a regular chord if it's in the light spaces. So it literally is a musical uh, chart that tells whatever being or person who's trying to access that um, how to read um, the gate song. So in, you know, in Star Wars now, that's what, you know, we learn to hear those songs. And, you know, with that, you get to the point where you aren't even, they want you fully operational in the spirit realm if they can get you there. So you, you learn to read it, but ultimately they get you to the point where you just, you hear the song. And as you sing that song, you know, you're able to interact with those spiritual gates and enter through them. Um, and then, you know, as when you get into the next project, the voice of God project, um, you know, you're able to open, close those gates, get access, you're able to complete operations. You know, they do use it for good, you know, for some of it, you're trained to locate people, to be able to assess, are they okay? What do they need? Mm -hmm. um, you know, there were times I've talked about in ritual where, you know, we could be in Chicago and there would be individuals who'd be in Germany at Nurse Schwanstein and, um, you know, literally they could hand something, you know, uh -huh. the gates, with, the spiritual realm would overlap with the physical so they could hand things to each other through those access points. Wow. Um, I know you talked about there's uh, portals over Chicago and in uh, Germany. So that's, that's fascinating. But what, one thing I have, I have past life memories of actually making sounds like that in the underground tunnels underneath the, uh, the pyramids, stuff like that and opening doors. So is that kind of like the same thing that you're talking about? Yeah, were those the pyramids that are in in the underground city Zion? Um, I thought they were under the Egypt, but you know, there's pyramids everywhere. So <laughs> <laughs> maybe I'm, I'm thinking I gotta go back to my past life. Give me a second. Right. Well, 
I'll be back in a minute. <laughs> so, <laughs> I, I, th I think it was uh, the pyramids of, uh, of uh, on Giza. Okay, interesting. Yeah. yeah, maybe not. Maybe you were in Zion. Maybe, maybe I'm just assuming. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I maybe you were in Zion. Wasn't that what you were wow. being trained for? Was the spiritual gates? And yeah, for opening. Is, is that because you can sing? I mean, is that what you were? No, um, it wasn't just about opening and closing the gates. Um, what the enemy needed, he, you know, we were specifically chosen for our particular positions because we were able to open multiple gates at one time where they then intersect and become one. And that's how the enemy plans to get his entire horde of spirits through to the heavenlies to usurp the throne of God. So that's what they would practice is, you know, how many gates can you get open at one time and how long can you hold those gates open? Wow. before you know things happen is it exactly um, like when you're when you're done doing something like that? are you wiped uh, out for the day? not necessarily okay yeah not necessarily i i've brought out you know probably the there was incidents that happened um back in 1984 um and it's it's documented but i'm trying to get the real document released in the pictures but, you know, they were doing just this, trying to get those big gates open. So the next phase was then, you know, connecting the demonic generals to a human host to get them through that gate. The one that they summoned, you know, to get into the human host, which was my training partner who was supposed to funnel these generals through, um, they summoned Moloch of all beings and i was like oh hell no like i mean i just molek and i have never got along so um you know we had um with this there were you know very distinct individuals because they were trying to show that they could also use this not just to get the demonic generals through but they could create you know the light beam a light force which we call emps and that that could be energy directed. You've got this mass amount of energy. And when you join these children with the demonic generals, you can direct that energy as a weapon someplace through the spiritual gates and hit, you know, so you could access, send that through the spiritual gate and it's going to come out another gate and target whatever area is at the other end of that other gate that is interconnected so they literally were displaying us as weapons um i i will you know i brought up my experience was that you know individuals like reagan and um colin ross was one of the psychologists there um you had individuals you know i don't know if i We'll just say the Gingriches. Um, so, you know, the Holy See was very aware and was financially backing these things. Mm -hmm. um, you had Strubelbein. You had, I think at the time, Alexander was there still too. Um, so you had all these you, um, individuals who, others who did remote viewing experiments out of Fort Meade were there. That was a huge area where they were training people to do the remote viewing and the PSYOPs. Um, so all these people were there plus leaders of other nations. So individuals who saw this, you know, the, um, head of Iran, the, um, Gorbachev was there, um, his second in command who works right alongside of Putin was there. Um, so you had major players, uh, Gaddafi was big. Um, they were all there and they all were bidding you know, how much were they going to pay for access for these weapons, you know? And um, so, you know, what happened was as, you know, this energy, mass amount of energy is formulating, you know, it ended up that as you're singing the song, you're working with the gates, you end up with this tornado of fire, essentially, that can be directed. And, you know, when I saw Moloch, uh, I got mad and <laughs> asked the Lord, close the gate. 
<laughs> and what happened, the fire dispersed from that tornado and over a thousand people that, not the people who were in the room, it was the people who were in the rooms next door, above and below in that military base, over a thousand people were, I'll just say fried crispy. Um, you know, they took me, they grabbed me, hauled me into that room next door and threw me in front of a crispy body and said, look what you did, you know? And it was like, well, <laughs> am I really responsible for this? Uh, I was six and a half years old, you know? Wow. So these are things that they've known about, you know, Aquino Brennan have been involved in these things with children. I'm not the only child who's gone through this. You know, mm -hmm. I can name, I'll just say many other children who I, I witnessed went through these experiments, you know, well, that the, the, the tornado fires that kind of the thing we saw with um, uh, Moses, uh, you know, the, 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 video you know, where the, the terrorists the, are playing and you know he, the presence of the presence of the lord coming down as a fire yes nice nice so and, your, and your explanation to... of, of remote viewing is is absolutely phenomenal because um i i kind of like break up my remote viewing because i can remote view and like you were talking mm -hmm. about here in the physical realm and see visions got carmen's mm -hmm. done thing so she's pretty pretty advanced in it too but i also go to the spiritual realm and I can like control events in the future. So if yeah. I see something coming, I can control it. So it took me years to develop all this, but you're- And that you're, would be looking glass training, you know, that um, where you're learning to, you can see the event and, and what the outcome is gonna be and you can manipulate, change things so that a different end result comes about. Wow. Yeah. Wow, unbelievable. I so. Uh, you guys last night mentioned Black Box, and when JCK and Michael and I were on with Mark Atwood, one of the visions that I saw were five black cubes, and was just curious if that means anything to you. I know it's kind of random, but... Yeah, actually it does. Um, you know, as we brought out, those black cubes are connected in the system to, um, they, they call it the cube of Saturn, which Saturn is another name for Satan or Lucifer. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the Muslims hold a, one of the largest black cubes in their possession. Wow. And they claim that literally it's, it's a black cube that fell from heaven. Right. Which we know that, you know, Lucifer was a bright morning star that fell from heaven. Um, with what you were seeing, um, there's an end time prophecy about, you know, the f five... Um, men who will open very specific end time books and they're black books and they're kept in those cubes and when the cubes open the books will be uh, brought out and those individuals are trained to we call it in the system they call it opening the prophecies that are the end time prophecies that are in those books so they will open those prophecies. And when that happens, it, it's like it unleashes it or, or, you know, it's that time for it to be fulfilled. So they, they reveal it as it's time for it to be fulfilled. Wow. Oh, awesome. Carmen. Boom. So that would be you know, the very first time I had an out of body experience. This is so bizarre. I went to Mecca and I was like, Mecca, why would I go there? And to be honest, I didn't even know that's where I was. I just saw there was this clock looking thing and I saw people walking around it mm -hmm. and about an hour later one of my friends had posted on Instagram a video of her in Mecca and it was people going around the big one and I was like whoa this is so crazy I just had a vision of this but mm -hmm. it was different it looked like a clock and she's like Carmen look closer a little bit further down on mm -hmm. my video the clock is right next to what do they call that the big black um, thing that's at Mecca. I forgot the name of it, but um, yeah, I've never been there. I don't know anything about it. It's really strange, but that's what came up when I was meditating about being on that secret space program um, mm -hmm. show with um, JCK and Michael. So yeah, that's wow. interesting. That gave me chills yeah. when you said that. Hmm. Scary. Incredible. Yeah. 
that, that theory, that's always... you to do something big. So, I mean, don't, yeah. don't doubt it, you know. That's, that's what I tell everybody, you know, don't doubt these things. Just kind of like observe. Yeah. Uh, don't get scared by it because uh, something awesome is coming through for you. That's what I say, too. It, it's like, you know, you're told ahead of time. It's like the Lord shows certain people so they can make it known. And then when those things happen, you know already that God's revealed it to you. So he's given you that knowledge and, and the purpose is so when it does happen, you're not afraid, you know, that he's sovereign and that he's revealed it and things are happening just as he reveals it. Yeah. So thank you for saying that. It felt very good to hear. (laughs) Yeah. That's, that's exactly, you know, that's what I learned with it. You know, the stuff that I saw, you know, was that he revealed it for a purpose, you know, so that thing people would know that, you know, it, it, it's not just some random thing, you know, even when they play or try to mess with time, the Lord's even sovereign in that, you know, that there's only so far, you know, that you'll hear the top levels, they, they'll kind of put it in terms of, you know, there's multiple, you know, timelines, and, and they split out and, and then they're like, it only goes so far, you know, they can only get it to go so far and it comes back And it intersects on this timeline that they cannot deviate from. They can't control that, those things, because they were decreed by the voice of God. It's a song, you know, and the Lord's not going to allow them to play with that song or add any keys or take it away. He's written the song and it's going to be composed just as he's (laughs) written it, you know, so. (laughs) I like that. And I was thinking when you were talking about the sphere, it's almost like a a combination, you know, three this way, 10 this way, you know, (laughs) only it's with your voice instead. And it's opening up these things. When you get in the presence of one of the stargates, does it amplify your gifts or do you have the same gifts no matter where you are? Yeah, it didn't. um, You know, once I was, you know, it even happened, I think, before I was really trained fully. Um, but particularly after I was trained, it didn't matter. You know, it's like the Lord will just, you know, if there's something he wants me to pray about, like I, the visions will just come and I just see it. Um, I interact, you know, so, um, you know, things would just happen. You know, I didn't have to even sing a song most of the time you know, I could just walk in a room and I would see both the physical and the spiritual overlapping and could interact in both worlds. So that was my experience. There wouldn't be a, even a distinguishing marker between that spiritual and physical world. Right. With your eyes open. Yeah. You you were talking about um, also uh, Abraham and, uh, you know, Hagar that mm-hmm. would be, uh, the the Egyptian woman that was uh, um, um, Sarah's servant. So he gave Hagar to Abraham because she couldn't conceive at the time. She right. did later, of course. So uh, Hagar, if because I've studied all this, um, Hagar was basically with Ishmael, was dropped off by Abraham, you know, in the desert tribes. And uh, I guess she was like, uh, they were without water. And she got a vision where water was. So she did like seven wanderings around this one area. Couldn't find it. And then finally came to a well. Right. That that well is still there. And that's why they do the circle, the seven circles, however many times they do it. And in regards to Hagar, you know, finding water and saving Ishmael. So it's pretty cool. Yeah. Beautiful, right? Yeah. Yeah. That distinctly. And and, and the Arabs don't really, you know, uh, worship or like women you know they like put veils on them and like but Michael's they, like, they let's even have their <laughs> progenitor of their whole you know uh you know religion if it right. weren't women it's crazy well well I love the part too you know because they will claim you know that they're the seed of Abraham they'll claim also that they're the the heirs which way back in those days you know the biggest thing that was being passed on was the spiritual aspect so you know, you see that with Abraham and all of his sons, you know, that, that he passed on, you know, his connection with God to them. So, you know, when you got to um, Isaac's sons, Jacob and Esau, you have this big battle 
you know, where Esau gets, he's out hunting, he's hungry and he comes back and Jacob's cooking this lentil stew. And he's like, give me the stew. And Jacob's like, give me your inheritance, you know? <laughs> and finally, you know, for, for a bowl of stew, Esau sells his inheritance. But the importance then was as the story goes on, y- you see what Jacob really got in that h- inheritance. He's the one who has the inner connections with God. He's the one that the Lord chooses, you know, you'll have the 12 tribes that become the sons of Israel. And, um, you know, so you have that, some of that with, with Ishmael too. What I love about that story is you have this moment at the well with Hagar where she's, she's, you know, she's wandered around like seven times, finally gets to this well and she's just broken, you know, she's been cast out. And and back in those days, if you didn't have a husband, you know, you didn't have land, you didn't have property, you didn't have food, you couldn't get a job, you couldn't get another Usually, I mean, it was really hard to get another guy to marry you, you know, especially if you had a kid. So she's kind of just stuck up a creek and she finally gets this well and she breaks down. And the most powerful thing she says is, you know, she has this moment with God. And after that moment where the Lord says, I see you, I haven't forgotten your son Ishmael, I'm going to make him a nation too. So God made her a promise and said, your son, you know, this is not the end for you too. This, this road doesn't lead to death. I'm going to make you a nation too. And she says, you are the God who sees me, you know? And so out of that came that beautiful experience. And so, you know, you do have, you know, the Muslims, those who are of the 14th brotherhood, they claim that right that spiritual right. It's like, no, we know the God of Abraham. Mm -hmm. We're his descendants too, along with Israel. You know, we all have that right, same right to God. So it's interesting. I used to see on on planes, uh, guys coming back, they'd have like huge, uh, like on the conveyor belts when the luggage comes, they would have like these huge buckets, you know, sealed containers of water from Mecca from that well. Oh, wow. like super, super holy to bring that back. So they would, they would do the Mecca thing. You know, it's like every, every Muslim is supposed to go to Mecca at some point in their life. So right. they would do that and they get the water and then they bring the water back and share it with the family. It was just like, it was pretty cool. Yeah. Very interesting when you look at all the stories and the history. I know. Right. Very good. Yeah. All right. So we've, we've kept you quite a bit. I mean, I, I feel like we could go on for, uh, hours more but maybe maybe we should do do this another time uh yeah, so finish up more later <laughs> yeah definitely so jess thanks thanks so much for coming on carmen you know thank always you. Yeah, awesome questions you. and uh yeah. amazing answers and uh both of you guys are so beautiful so thanks a lot for coming on the show yeah definitely thank, thank you. you both as well yeah. so everybody and, have a safe weekend and get out there and anoint your territory <laughs> <That's right. laughs> exactly and <laughs> that love